welcome to your second week in TFA. So this week, we will discuss the views of Florence Nightingale and Dorothea Orem on person, um, environment, health, and nursing. So let me start with Florence Nightingale, who is known for her environmental theory. So Nightingale was the founder of modern nursing. So Fano, so let us um, look at or read her history. She was born on May 12, 1820 from a fluent aristocratic Victorian family of Edward and Frances Nightingale. Um, she came from a rich family. She was named after her birthplace which is Florence, Italy. She was a Victorian leader after na yung mga pangyayari. Manoon siya as for her um, theory. So during her time, most of the women was not sent to school. They are prepared to become a good wife and to raise children but on the case of Florence Nightingale his father tutored her in mathematics languages religion and philosophy according to Sir Thomas Cook she was a linguist had a vast knowledge of science mathematics literature and arts well read in philosophy history politics and economics so, will inform about workings of the government and political science. That's why those knowledge help her in, in her practice. She was able to apply all the knowledge she gained into her practice. So, in 1837, in her diary, she was 17 years old back then. Um, one time... Uh, nung mag -isa siya, according to her diary God spoke to me and called me to his service so my calling kay Nightingale so that time hindi pa niya talaga maintindihan kung ano yung calling ni Lord sa kanya so that time hindi naman daw siya ganun ka religious pero pinafollow niya yung mga teachings ni Jesus Christ tapos yung Bible so nag serve as guide niya um, actually marami rin yung nag propose sa kanya to get married pero nire reject niya kasi nga um, hindi yun yung happiness na nakikita niya pa during that time so may something pa siya she want to do something she was a Unitarian who believed that action for the benefits of others is a primary way of serving God. So, in 1851, she completed her training at Geisherwerk, Germany as a nurse. So, nag-training siya kasi after nung may man niya sa kanya, um, with the help of her family, no, yung family friend nila, so nakapag-train siya as a nurse sa Germany. In 1853, she became the super superintendent of the Hospital of Invalid Gentlewoman in London. So, nagkaroon doon ng hospital na nagsisearch sila who is qualified for that position and they found out that Nightingale has the qualities to fit in the position. Kaya siya yung nakuha. In 1854, during the Crimean War, Nightingale received a request from Sidney Herbert, who is a family friend and a secretary of war, to go to Iskutari, Turkey, to provide trained nurses to care for the wounded soldiers. So, nagkaroon ng war during that time, no? So, yung war na yun between Russian, um, French, yan. So, nagkaroon ng war. Yung Crimean War is yung, actually, ang cause daw niyan is not that significant naman. No? It's just about the religion. So, 
Pagdating doon ni Florence Nightingale sa Turkey, so, pagpasok ni doon, kasama niya ang, may kasama pa siyang mga nurses tsaka na dala-dala niya, nakita niya yung major problems. Lack of sanitation and presence of filth, no? Few chamber pots, contaminated water, contaminated bed and linens, overflowing seaspools, frostbite, lice infestation, wound infection, so more on sa environment yung nakita niya. Kaya ang ginawa ni Florence Nightingale, um, um, in-influence niya tong mga um, ano dyan, yung mga heads dyan, so in-influence niya na kailangan magkaroon ng changes dyan, nilinis yung mga floors, pinalinis niya lahat, ang una pa daw niyang ginawa is nag-order siya ng maraming soaps, okay, mga sabon, okay, tapos pinalinis yung mga wounds, nilinis yung environment, yan, she was called the lady of plump, as immortalized in the poem Santa Filomena, Long Philo, 1857. Tin tinawag siyang Lady of the Lamp. Kasi, every night, bago matulog, pagtapos lahat ng duties, umiikot pa rin siya. Umiikot pa rin siya, isa-isa niya pa rin tinitingnan yung mga patients, yung mga wounded soldiers. Tinitingnan niya doon kung na-provide ba yung care na kailangan nila kung comfortable ba yung mga patient. Dinadalaw niya muna yan bago siya mag-rest. At night, she carried lamp while taking rounds from the room to room to look after her patient. This earned her the affectionate title of lady with the lamp. So, her belief that action for the benefit of others is the primary way of serving God serve as the foundation for defining her nursing work as a religious calling. So, parang religious calling nga. Nightingale did not subscribe to the germ theory, but she was very clearly understood the concept of contagion, yung hawaan, and contamination through organic materials from the patient of the environment as observed in her work. So, hindi pa naman kasi masyadong ano yung germ theory during the time. Pero, makikita mo doon sa kanyang mga work na more on, doon sa contamination, more on cleanliness ang kanyang uh, pinipropose. She believed that disease was a reparative process and that manipulation of the patient's environment, ventilation, warmth, light, diet, cleanliness and noise are necessary for proper nursing care and health of the patient. So, para sa kanya, kasi during her time, doon sa hospital na pinunta niya, lahat daw ng papasok doon ng mga soldiers, parang hindi na sila nabubuhay, namamatay sila because of infection. So, for her, gagaling pa yan. It's a reparative process. So, kailangan lang tong mga yung surroundings niya, kailangan lang magkaroon ng manipulation. Kasi nga, ang kinamamatay nila is because of infection doon sa sugat nila. So, Nightingale did not use the term environment at first. Hindi naman talaga term. Yung mababasa mo doon sa diary niya. She used the term surroundings in her writings. Pero it is referring to environment. So, the five essential components of environment health of nightingale are the following pure air so papano ba yung so dapat yung ventilation buksan ang bintana para makapasok yung fresh air pure water so dapat pa, patabol yung water for drinking efficient drainage malinis yung mga drainage kasi pwede magkaroon doon ng Ah, syempre, yung infection, papasok pa rin doon yung mga amoy mo, so hindi rin maganda. Cleanliness and light. So, ito yung bubuksan ng window para papasok yung sunlight, diba? So, for pure air or proper ventilation, this is the greatest concern of Nightingale. To keep the air he breathes as pure as the external air without chilling him. So, kasi, syempre, malamig yung lugar nila. It is cited in Nightingale in 1969, no? Uh, you can read it from the book of Aligod. 
recognizes this as a source of disease and recovery. Okay. So, light. Direct sunlight is needed by the patients. That acor that's according to Florence Nightingale. So, talaga namang yung sunlight natin, um, it is good for our body, di ba? Nurses were instructed to move and position patients to expose them to sunlight. So, ano bang vitamins na makuha sa sunlight? The vitamin D, which is necessary for your calcium absorption at mas nakaka um, pag may light ka, di ba? Parang ang sarap din sa pakiramdam mo. Okay. Water. So, according to Nightingale, lack of access to pure water leads to disease. Di ba? Pag hindi malinis yung tubig mo, so pwedeng magkaroon ng diarrhea, magkaroon ng infection. Then, cleanliness. Nightingale believed that dirty environments such as your floors, carpets, walls, and bed linens was a source of infection through the organic matter it contained. Diba? Pag hindi malinis yung floor mo, so pwedeng pagbahaya niya ng mga viruses, ng germs, or any kinds of microorganisms that might um, bring you to illness. She advocated bathing patient no, on a frequent, even daily basis at the time when this practice was not the norm. So, during this time, hindi pa uso yung papaliguan yung patient. Where? Yeah. So, during her time, nag-advocate siya na dapat lininisin yung pasyente. Ayan, pumasok na yung um, um, bad, bed bot. So, bed bot. So, pumasok na yung bad, bed bot. So, ibabat yung pasyente para malinis si patient. So, of course, to remove microorganisms. Then, it also requires nurses to bath daily. So, hindi lang yung patient, yung iyong, Ah, papaliguan. Also, ikaw, mismo na nag, nag, nag-handle or nag-care ng patient is of course para malinis ka because you are you are um, visiting patient from one patient to another. So, you might be bringing um, microorganisms from one patient to another. So, you are a carrier of microorganisms. So, According to Nightingale, dapat malinis din yung nurse and they have to wear clean clothing. So, dapat laging nagpapalit ng damit and wash hands frequently. So, during her time, no, dito na pala pinapakilala na rin niya yung hand washing. That is according to DOH, no, ngayon, um, proper hand washing, no, so you have to observe the proper hand washing kasi lalo na this time, yung virus natin, no, um, that is one way of preventing uh, the spread of microorganisms or viruses. Kasi you imagine your hands kung ano-ano hahawakan mo yan. Di ba? Every now and then kung ano-ano hinahawakan mo. Hawa ka dito, hawa ka doon. So kung meron kang natouch at merong microorganisms, ikinakalat mo lang yan. So it is very important that you have to wash your hands frequently. Then, Efficient drainage. So, presence of organic material create a dirty area. So, imaginein mo na lang kung yung drainage dyan ay uh, madumi, barado. So, hindi makaka-flow ng mabuti. So, minsan pa nga, iyo talaga, no? Pag napansin mo isang lugar, meron akong napunta ng isang lugar, no? Yung, yung matagal na talaga siguro hindi nag-flash yung CR. So, pagpunta mo dun, magkikita mo, eh, gumagapang yung mga upod doon. Okay, so kailangan malinis ang drainage. Appropriate handling and disposal of body excretions and sewage was required to prevent contamination of the environment. So dito pa lang pala no, not only this time, 'di ba? Kung napansin niyo sa hospital, 'di ba, yellow bag, pag yellow bag, so dapat ilalagay yung um yung mga ano, yung mga garbage na um, from bodily, yun, yung mga galing ginagamit doon or infectious na garbage doon mo dapat ilagay. So, dito pa lang kailangan yung proper disposal of garbage din. So, in-advocate na rin yan ni Florence Nightingale. And the other concepts that was um, mentioned in her uh, theory are the following. The warm, quiet, diet. So, dapat hindi rin sobrang 
um, um, full, di ba? Hindi na sobrang giniginaw kasi nagkukos na din yung sobrang lalik ng roast mic. Tapos quiet din dapat kasi yung noise nakaka-distract din yung nakaka-stress. Nakaka-stress, hindi nakakapag-rest yung patient. We're in. Rest is very important para doon sa recovery ng patient. Di ba? Kahit ngayon naman. Rest is very important kasi if you lack ng rest, uh, prone kang magkasakit. Di ba? And then diet, of course, the proper nutrition. Okay, ano, uh, ano ba dapat ang content ng diet? Dapat makakain ng mabuti. Lalo na sa during her time, um, wounded, uh, she is caring for wounded soldiers, of course, ito yung may mga sugat, no? So, kailangan nila ng protein para mapabilis yung kanya um, tissue repair. Ayan. So, warm, quiet, and diet. So, for warm, ulitin natin, manipulation of environment through the use of wood fire to produce warm or opening windows kapag mainit para pamasok yung init and properly positioning the patient in the room para magkaroon siya ng sunlight Ayan. noise okay. so noise created by physical environment or physical activities in the environment or room was to be avoided by the nurse because it could harm the client diba? as I mentioned earlier so it will distract it will disturb your patient no she or or he cannot rest and diet she believed that patient with chronic illnesses could be starved to death diba so pag di mo pinakain yun dahil wala siyang ganang kumain it is lalo siyang um, mawawala nung uh, nutrients na kailangan for her for his recovery Nurse should assess dietary intake as well as meal schedule and its effect on the client. Ano ba ang kinakain ni patient? Um, does it contain the um, desired nutrient value for her or for him to for his recovery? Diba? Yung schedule niya, kumakain ba siya sa tamang oras, breakfast, lunch, dinner, or baka naman once a day mo lang siya binibigyan ng food? Diba? She believed that patient with okay, sorry, that's um, petty management. Also, another um, concepts now that uh, you can see in her theory. Petty management was a term used to denote that nurse was in control of the environment, both physically and administratively. So, an example here is protecting the patient from receiving upsetting news. So, baka naman yung mga news na yun, ano ba yung mga upsetting news na yun, yung may sakit na nga si patient, ano pa yung news na nareceive niya? For example, no, meron akong isang halimbawa, during this COVID times, medyo nakakalungkot lang, no, isang, isang family, yung uh, friend namin, no, yung lola, nagkaroon ng, biglang nagkaroon ng difficulty of breathing. Tapos itong lola na isugod sa hospital. So, suspect for uh, COVID, di ba? Tapos ito si lolo, na hospital na si lola, na admit, napakahirap ang maghanap ng hospital during the time nila. Then, ito si lolo, ayun, nasa bahay, na iwan. So, lahat ng family members sobrang busy doon kay lola. Tapos, only to found out na nung umaga, dinalaw si Lola sa hospital. Pagdating ng gabi, ito naman si Lolo. Biglang nag... Hinimatay. Kaya may pass out si Lolo. And then, nakoma tong si Lolo. Two days or three days lang, yun, nawala si Lolo. While si Lola nasa hospital. So, paano mo sasabihin kay Lola yun? Na, wala na si Lolo. di ba? It's an upsetting news, di ba? Lalo siyang hindi gagaling at baka lumala pa. Okay, so seeing visitors who could negatively affect recovery. Or baka naman yung visitors na yun eh, imbis na gumaling siya, lalo siyang ma-stress. And from experiencing sudden disruptions of sleeps. Ito nga yung sinasabi ko kanina, na habang natutulog siya, eh baka nade-disturb siya. So, her work formed the foundation for professional nursing and distinguished nursing from the work of domestic servants. So, 
doon sa effort ni Nightingale through her writings, yung mga na-propose niya, naging influential si Nightingale. Hanggang yung work niya ay nag kaya kaya from being vocation or vocational, yung nursing na i-move into professional. Kaya na promote into professional. Okay, Florence Nightingale was an English social reformer, statistician, and the founder of modern nursing. So, siya yung founder ng ating modern nursing. So, yung statisticians na yan, pagiging statistician niya, ay yung mga na-learned niya um, during tutor, um, nag-help sa kanya yun. Nag-gamit niya yung statistics in her study, kung paano ba talaga mag-care. Yan. Very mathematics na yan. Uh, let us now look at the meta paradigm of Nightingale. So, the paradigm of Nightingale, as I mentioned earlier, this is the... Uh, yung major concepts of meta paradigm among nursing theorists includes the person, nursing, environment, and um, health. So, on person, how does Nightingale view a person? So, Nightingale referred to the person as a patient. Although, hindi man masyadong clear doon sa kanyang theory kung anong sinabi niya about the person, but you can see that the person was a patient. And nurses performed tasks to and for the patient and controlled the patient's environment to enhance recovery. So, the patient, a patient according to Nightingale, is passive patient. Nagre-receive lang sila ng care. So, that's how Nightingale view a person. On health, so Nightingale defi uh, define health as well as being well and using every power that the person has to the fullest extent in living life. She envisioned that maintenance of health through the prevention of disease via environmental control and social responsibility. So, kung yung health ma-achieve ng isang tao, kapag kinokontrol mo ang kanyang environment, you manipulate the environment. So, how about the environment? So, Nightingale, according to Nightingale, and environment, to assist nature in healing the patient. So, ano ba yung mga nature na nabanggit niya? The pure air, the pure water, the sunlight, di ba? Environmental improves would affect the sick poor people both their bodies and mind. Okay. Tapos, meron nga siyang five components which was discussed a while ago. Okay. Yung pure air, pure water, light, so ano pa ba? Her admonition on, envi on environment naman, her admonition to nurses, both providing care in home and hospitals, was to create and maintain a therapeutic environment that would enhance comfort and recovery of the patient. On nursing, so according to her, or Nightingale, nursing is being responsible for someone else's life. So you are responsible for someone else's life. You have to do your part. You have to think of what are the best, the best way to care for your client. So, why, what nursing has to do is to put the patient in the best condition for nature to act upon him. So, that is again by yung five na sinasabi niya, pure air, pure water, um, and etc. Okay? So, the call of nursing, according to Nightingale, is to facilitate the body's reparative process by manipulating the client's environment. So, ulit-ulit na yan. The framework, manipulate the client's environment to include appropriate noise, nutrition, hygiene, light, comfort, socialization, and hope. Ito yung kanyang framework of her theory. So, she became a heroine in Great Britain as a result of her work in Crimean War. Her depiction of the very poor sanitary conditions in the hospital wards of Scutari is overwhelming. 
She fought the bureaucracy for food, bandages, fresh bedding, and clean supplies for the for the soldiers during that time, or for the patient. Okay, she spent the years after the Crimean War establishing schools of nursing. So, siya yun, after the Crimean War, so, established na siya ng school of nursing and influencing public policy by lobbying her acquaintances about several co of her concerns. After the war, she returned to England. She was awarded funds in recognition of her work, which she used to establish a teaching institution for nurses at St. Thomas Hospital and King's College Hospital in London. Her principles and rules serves the foundation of nursing practice. So, ito yung mga sinusundan natin ngayon. She should continue to be recognized as the brilliant and creative founder of modern nursing. She was the first nursing theorist. Galing ni Florence Nightingale, no? Her reports describing health and sanitary condition in Crimea and England identify her as an outstanding scientist and empirical researcher. So, napakagaling. Her dependence on observable data to support her position, it can be said that Nightingale was the first nurse researcher. So, she was the first nurse researcher. So, awards and later life of Nightingale. So, Nightingale was the first woman to be granted the Order of Merit and the Royal Red Cross by no less than the Queen Victoria of Great Britain. She was the second most famous British person after the Queen herself. She was the recipient of the award or entitled to use the post nominal letters OM, RRC on their names. She was a manager and a trainer of nursing during the Crimean War in which she organized care for the wounded soldiers. In 1860, she laid the foundation of professional nursing with the establishment of her nursing school at St. Thomas Hospital in London. It was the first secular nursing school in the world and is now part of the King's College London. Actually, it is still um, operating. She was able to work her atheist and died in her sleep on August 13, 1910 at the age of 90. The news of her death spread across the world and she instantly became a celebrated and legendary person. In the New York Times in 1910, Florence Nightingale, the famous nurse of the Crimean War and the only woman who ever received the Order of Merit died yesterday afternoon at her London home. Although she had been an invalid for a long time, rarely leaving her room, where she passed the time in a half recumbent position and was under the constant care of a physician, her death somewhat unexpected. A week ago, she was quite sick, but then improved and on Friday was cheerful. During the night, alarming symptoms developed and she gradually sank until 2 o'clock Saturday afternoon when the end come. So, yun yung end. How does a life of Nightingale ends? So, what are the applications of, of Nightingale's theory? So, let us see. On cleanliness, proper disposal of garbage Diba? Dapat yan. So, kaya sa hospital, or dapat nga kahit saan, meron tayong yellow, uh, blue, black, diba? Yellow uh, for infectious um, garbages. Strict implementation of RA9003. Yung tapat mo. Implementation of tapat po, linis ko program. Regular collection of garbages. So, dapat sa mga barang tayo dapat regular yung collection ng garbages para Kasi nga, nagkaroon ng mga uh, microorganisms, viruses yan, pwedeng mag, um, lead into illness dun sa isang lugar. Awareness of environmental sanitation, reduce, reuse, or recycle materials. 
and frequent hand washing. So, hanggang ngayon, ginagamit natin yan. And efficient drainage, the clogging of sewerage system is necessary. Avoid throwing of garbage along the road or anywhere. So, kayo ba? Saan ba kayo nagtatapon? Basta pagkain ng kayo hindi tapon na lang kung saan saan. So, pwede yung bumara. Nag-block sa ating mga drainage. Tapos, pag nag karoon ng blockage doon, pwedeng bumaha or pwedeng langawin, pwedeng madumi tingnan. So, maintenance of efficient drainage is a must. So, proper monitoring of factory and chemical waste disposal. So, dapat ginagawa ng paranggayan ng government yan. And then, for pure air. So, we have to plant more trees. So, ngayon, usok-uso ngayon ng mga plantita at plantito, di ba? Para daw pure ang air sa inyong kwarto. So, ito yung mga binibenta at napakamahal naman ng mga um, plants. So, ako naman, magtatanim na lang ako ng, ng mga seeds, ng mga langka, ng avocado. So, yun pa rin naman ay makakapag-bring pa rin ng pure air sa atin as long as meron ka mga plants. Monitoring of vehicle smoke emission. Di ba, hinuhuli dapat yan. Monitoring of factory smoke emission. So, naka, kasi nagsisira, pumapangit yung ating environment. So, actually, pag titinan nga natin itong pangyayari about COVID-19 ngayon, ano, um, parang minsan masasabi mo rin na merong purpose din si Lord talaga. Kasi during the time na nales na yung mga taong lumabas, nales na yung paggamit ng sasakyan, nalilis na rin yung pollution, yung polluted yung air natin lumilinis, di ba? Support the Clean Air Act, awareness and global warming phenomena, support biodiesel fuel utilization, utilization of wind and solar energy, medyo mahal nga lang daw to, proper transport of garbage disposal. So, that's how para yung air natin is pure and clean. So, siguro sabi ni Lord, wala na talaga, ang dami na talaga ng tao. So, talagang marumi na yung ating air. So, para lang din for the sake, yan, ginawa. Parang isa din yan, no, na nagkaroon ng virus. But then, of course, nasa inyo yan, nasa tao yan, kung susunod sila, eh, kung maglalabas-labas pa rin sila, matigas pa rin ang ulo, talagang yun ay magkakaroon ka. So, better you stay at home, clean your surroundings. For pure water, monitoring of potability of water. So, dapat malinis yung water na iniinom natin. So, usong-uso na rin naman ngayon yung binibili natin yung mga water na purified. So, make sure na it is really reliable, malinis talaga. Boil water when in doubt. So, talagang kapag hindi malinis yung water, when you are in doubt, of course, you can boil it para ma-avoid mo yung um, this is na pwede mong makuha in a uh, uh, not clean water. So, nagkaroon nga rin ng issue yung about sa fall, you know, no? Na pwedeng nag-leak daw, di ba? Parang nakakatakot yung, yung water. Pwedeng, pwede kasing pumasok dun yung polio virus, tapos mainom ng isang tao. Tapos, of course, nagkaroon no, ng polio. Di ba bago nagkaroon ng nagkaroon ng virus, nagkaroon ng outbreak ng polio. So, dapat malinis talaga yung water natin iniinom. Use commercially prepared drinking water. Okay. Monitoring of proper sewerage system and proper waste disposal. Assure pipeline consistency na dapat malinis siya and conserve water. Huwag sayangin yung water. So, according to Nightingale, mercy is an art. And if it is to be made an art, it requires an exclusive devotion, as hard a preparation as any painter's or sculpture work. So, if it is an art, kailangan din talagang paghirapan natin yan. Okay? So, that ends my presentation. Um, I have a video, a bunch in this um, lecture, in this week lecture. So, make sure you watch the video, watch my PowerPoint presentation, or you can read my PowerPoint presentation. So, doble yan. Nilagay ko dito ang um, um, PowerPoint with video with my face, and of course, the PowerPoint itself on PDF format. 
which is more easier for you to study kung alin man doon so you have to study it and never forgot to watch the nightingale's video kasi mas maganda explanation doon mas marami mas steps by step mas mas detailed so mas maintindihan ninyo and you can appreciate nursing more and then karon tayo ng discussion um dito sa sa after this one may discussion na pwede kayong mag-comment doon kung what was your reaction although it is not a graded uh, discussion it is not graded but then I will be checking uh, your attendance from there kung talagang um, bi nag-watch ba kayo ng video, binasa nyo ba what is your reaction about the movie how do you feel after watching the movie, yun lang ang mga reaction just a short reaction or less um um, at least one paragraph only with at least five sentences with it, wag naman sobrang sobrang dami or you can have one to two sentences as your reaction after you watch the movie just for me to know that you really watch the, the movie or you really um, watch my video and read my lectures for this week okay, thank you God bless you all